Hey guys, so yesterday I had like a, I don't know what the hell, I had like a major meltdown because I was just so upset and pissed with just the bullshit and the tradition. I mean, I've had that before, but I don't know, sometimes when you go through changes energetically or spiritually, um things start things that you keep repressed or things that you keep inside start to kind of flood out and I went to I went to Ogun Jira Friday night and then Saturday and Sunday I went to two Ogun festivals at two different Tejeros in the east zone of Sao Paulo and some interesting things happened um, I had one guy come down, well, actually a lot of people were coming down around me, which is weird because I kept coming, my Risha kept trying to come down and people were more worried about me. And then the people who were worried about me all came down with their Risha and that was kind of weird and cool at the same time. But I, I had to switch it up and start helping everybody else out. And one guy versus Babalu Aye came down and then it left and then uh, later he was just looking weird and then he, uh, Ogun came down and then as Ogun came down outside the, outside the temple, outside the Sahara it was on the street and then I was trying to help him with his wife and then he just signaled, like he kept pointing at me and I was like what? And then he hugged me and then he hugged me like two or three times and then I just had this weird notion to pick him up and I picked him up off the ground as he was hugging me and then his own goon left like that and then he came back too and then his wife was really shocked and I, I didn't even know who it was I was just like who was that and they're like oh that was his own goon and I was like what um because we were at an old goon festa and there was a couple other people had old goon dancing inside so it was a little strange for me because I never saw that where it happened randomly outside the temple on the street and then the Baba Anderson his Ogun um, I was just waiting in line and then he kind of kneeled down and um, in front of me and then gave me a hug and I was like okay this is not normal but um that was an interesting night. And then the next night, I had a couple other Rishas hug me. Uh, it was O'Day, Oshun, um, at another Tejero. And um, one of my friends, his little Guna Day came down, even though he told me it wasn't. He's like, he's, he's like, I'm not going to incorporate. And I was like, you are. And like, as soon as they start playing, boom. And I guess all the different energies and stuff. And... And most people know, like, probably somebody was throwing at me or whatever. So I got really, like, ups I woke up really upset. Someone just said something that, set a friend said something that set me off. And then I was just, like, really upset. And all this emotion came flooding out. And then, now I'm good. But it was just something, some stuff I had pent up. Um, maybe for months. Because being in another country, being, um by yourself is kind of stressful and seeing people differently where you thought they're one way and then seeing that they're another way is another is also um disconcerting and uncomfortable and then I finally figured out after I was talking to one of my friends last night that um a lot of stuff that has happening, that has happened or is happening, I already know that it's hap going to happen beforehand because it comes up in divination with Ifa or my Arishas or even a reading that I have. And I know it's coming and I am so rebellious and I'm so, um, I think any, any priest is like that because we, we, uh, are helping other people with their conditions. We're helping other people with 
their lives and we try to change give insight and if we have insight in something that's not that we don't want to happen we try to change it or try to impede it or lessen it so i think it's natural for any body who's in like a priest position or or a spiritual healer or a practitioner or whatever hoodoo person conjure whatever you want to call that type of class of person that we want to change the outcome but then we also must realize that some things are inevitable and especially i'm learning that the hard way with harisha is like if I want to date someone, and they say no, it's going to be a no, like whether I want it to be or not. If I want to go somewhere or take a certain job or do a certain career, and they say no, it's going to be no, and they don't literally make up blockages for me. I've had my, and I know this doesn't happen in most other people's lives, but with me, they really are on my ass, like especially with SU, like, I'm like, no, I'm going to go do this. And then I've had, I've been locked out of my, out of my apartment. I've been, I've had things not work. I've had the power go out. I've had the internet go out. I've had my phone stop working. I've had my credit card stop working. I've had multiple things with technology not work because I I want to be I'm like maybe sometimes sometimes he is tricky and sometimes I'm just like whatever and I don't pay attention but when when Arisha says to me no this is not the path to take and I'm like I'm gonna take it anyway they're like okay motherfucker stop they stop everything and then I get really upset because something happened or like even I mean I lost my phone in an Uber and I got it back in the same night which doesn't usually happen especially not in Brazil with an iPhone an iPhone X Max XS Max and yeah that was that I was like that phone's gone um but I got my phone back and it's like it was just little things that happen like that where it's like, um, no. And I in these little signs because I, with me it's it's weird. I can see so much in people when I'm objective about it, but when it's cons- when it's personal, when it's either someone I date or someone I'm going to have some type of or basically any type of relationship. Any type of relationship spiritually, I get kind of clouded and I get blocked. And it's almost like it, it's like a self-enforced block where I don't want to see certain things. I'll notice them, but I'll like tell myself that it's just just my, you know, past experience or it's just my issues or it's just me not um, wanting this to work out. And it's actually the opposite. I'm seeing full warnings, like alarms in my head, like danger, danger, do not do this. Do not go pat, do not collect $200. Do not go past go. And then when stuff doesn't work out or it goes horribly wrong, I turn around and blame Arisha for it. And I'm saying this very candidly because I do. I do do that sometimes. And or, you know, like most people, they blame God, they blame a whole bunch of people, but it's really my fault. And then I also get mad at myself because I usually get mad at myself before I get mad at Arisha, the funny thing. But it's like I get mad at myself because I'm like, why didn't I see this? Why didn't I, you know, notice this? And I did see it like hindsight is twenty twenty. I did see it. I did see it coming, but for some reason, I think a little part of me thinks that I can change it or that I can change people or I can change their behavior. 
and maybe that's arrogance that I didn't think I had. Maybe that's um, just a, a human flaw. We all try to think that we have power over the world and over other people, especially when we get into a spiritual capacity, because it is easy to make people um, do certain things, use certain spirits to make people act a certain way. So we think we can do it in our own lives. But when you have a life that's kind of preordained to go through certain things, and then you have things like, especially because I'm in Nifa and Afa, and I have Odu that specifically state, like, the this is certain, there's certain paths I'm supposed to have, there's certain taboos I'm supposed to do, there's certain things I'm supposed to do, and then I have Arisha and Vodun and all these other spirits on the same type of way live of the plan, and when I want to go off plan, they're like, nope, get your ass back over here, like, we let you go do what you want for, what, 33 years? No. So now, like, every time I try to go off the road, they're like, Nope, you need to do something else. Or they'd be like, okay, we'll let you date someone for a little bit, but this ain't the one. So you go have your little fun. Ain't gonna last. Don't cry later when it don't work out. And that's how it is. Literally, I have Ephos like, it's not gonna work. And I'm like, okay. Can I still date them? Yeah. It's not gonna work, though. So, part of me is like, what's the point? And the other part's like, fine, we'll see. I like the challenge, but I'm starting to get tired of the challenge because life is a challenge in itself. And life can be hard. Hey, and life can have, especially the older you get, you see a lot more stuff. You start to understand things more. You see a lot more people... um, in unfortunate situations, you see a lot more people die. And so you start to appreciate just the little things in life. And you start to appreciate the time that you have. And the time that you have, you don't want it to be difficult. So this is more of me, um, I guess, growing up, if you will, in a spiritual sense. Um, being more humble to my place in the world in my life because yes I can help people yes I can change things for other people but I have a certain trajectory that I really can't ignore and I can't really bypass it or even bribe it or haggle with it so that's the lesson I'm learning now that um, there's just some things you can't avoid and there's some things you have to go to go through and there's some things you have to overcome and there's no amount of magic or ebo or sacrifice that will prevent or, or you can't cheat your way through certain things basically um and also, I'm finding a lot, of, especially in the last two weeks, I'm finding a lot of people. It was just weird. Just I don't really believe in Easter anymore, but just uh, just looking at the the whole Lent and Easter and uh, um, all these things, and also um, I'm finishing like my my three months of getting Shango done, and I'll be done on May first, and. Um, just all these different things in transition for me and I'm also in another country and all this other stuff but I'm having even in another country I'm having all these people from Brazil that I've talked to in the last two years just popping back up I stopped talking to them didn't want to talk to them anymore didn't want to see them ever again all of a sudden they're just popping back up in my life in the last two weeks and I have to deal with it. And it's, they're being brought in by other people. Like, I'm meeting random people. And then they're like, oh, do you know this person? Or this person is causing a problem for me. And it's the same person that I blocked for two years. Like, it's just all this other stuff. Or I have clients and they're about to initiate in the same house that I left. 
And so I have to go through all this stuff, process through all this stuff that I have already processed through and I already thought I over overcame. And then it has to, it's almost like a test for me. Did I really get over it? Did I really get over my experiences? Did I really get over um, my relationships with certain people, spiritually and non-spiritually? Um, and if they come back into my life again, how do I handle it? And like, you know, you can still not like somebody, but how you deal with it can be different. Your comment when you're previously coming from a place of like regret, pain, anger, and then you can still not like somebody, but you're coming at it from another point of view, more of a, uh, almost like a caring sort of way. Cause it's like, you look at everything that you went through with these people and then somebody else is about to go through the same thing. And you have to kind of put yourself out of the situation and say, okay, this is what I went through with these people. This, this is exactly how it is. Do you tell the person what you went through or do you keep your mouth shut and let another person go through the same shit that you did? A lot of people will keep their mouth shut and let people go through what you went through just because, I guess, misery loves company. Or people think that if I went through this bullshit, then the other person should go through the same bullshit too and learn their own lessons. That's another way to look at it. But my my view is that if you go through some bullshit and it was unfortunate, you learned from it, you healed from it, and somebody else is about to go through the same thing, and they're being put in your life randomly, and they ask you about it, some part of you should feel for them and not want them to go through the same shit that you did. Um, and just tell them the truth. And you may get fall back or even fall out from it, but... At least you did what you felt you needed to do. Tell your own truth. Tell your own experience. And they can make the decision for themselves. That's what I started. I learned recently that along the lines of all these different things I'm talking about. About some things you can manipulate in life and some things you can't. At the end of the day, you can't. If you tell people the truth. You, they have to deal with it the way they want to deal with it. And they have to make the decision that um, they make the decision. I used to get so attached to what people did or even my clients about where they went or um, what they did in their life. And I used to care so much. And now I'm just more detached because at a certain point from a spiritual level, no matter how many signals you have, no matter how many messages, no matter how many, much input you get, we all have free will to a certain extent. And you do with, with your life what you, what you want to do with it. If you decide to go down a road that's not great, that's not really everyone else's fault that told you, danger, be careful. It's yours. And I, I'm starting to apply that to myself. And sometimes I see all these different things and all these warnings. And I'm so eager to just go forward that I don't think about it. And I just, and that's, and that's a reason why, um, like a lot of my experiences spiritually, I had problems with some certain priests and even some of them were really good priests, but they treated me wrong. And I, I thought I used to, I did blame myself and then I blamed them too. But then when I thought about it, I was like, okay, so I went with these people. I paid my money. I was supportive. I did everything they told me to do. And still they either didn't do things correctly or didn't do things correctly for me. Or they started trying to bind me or do stuff to me to keep me there. Even though in my E5 sign says quite clearly, and anybody can look it up, that I'm never going to stay in a house for a long time because I'm not supposed to. Um, 
it's just it's quite clear in my odu that I'm always going to I mean I've had that issue with my parents I'm not, I can't live with my parents it says I can't live with my parents I can't even live in the same state with my parents or same city it just doesn't it's not going to work out um so yeah I I tried and that's another situation where I tried I knew what was going to happen I know I talked about it. I talked about my old dude. I was like, look, we're, I even said it. I even started telling people from the beginning. I'm like, look, we're going to do this. We're going to do a ceremony. I'm going to just be part of the house and I'm going to be like a distant member. I'm not going to be there for, for Christmas, New Year's, I don't know, lunch, dinner, all that shit. But I'll be a part of the house. I'll be supportive. I'll do my thing. I'll pay my money, blah, blah, blah. Even that still something goes wrong. People get mad. And then shit happens. And then we're in another spiritual war, da, 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 da. So it is, it is what it is. But that was still me trying to force a situation that wasn't going to happen. That's, well, not force a situation. It was more of I was going to try to force the outcome of the situation into a more positive one than what Odu's going to say. But even during my initiation, if I was like, this bitch is leaving. Like, this it was quite clear. It was just like, it was like my godparents were just like astonished. If I was like, nope, is he going to stay? Nope. It's like, is he, is he going, is he going to do this next ceremony with you? Nope. And I, it was, it was all right there at If I was even t- talking about us right there, our relationship right in, right in my Ita. But he didn't want to realize it. He didn't, I didn't want to see it. And it is what it is. Um, it. Yeah, I, I have. I've been told that many times. I have to have my own house. I've been told that many, many, many times. And it's just certain rules or certain things. Like in Condom Blay, I'm new. So I got another six years to wait. So if I have my own house, I'm definitely not doing anything in Condom Blay. And I, I, it doesn't matter how many initiations I have. I totally respect the rules of the tradition um, and how they're set up. So if there's a certain time period, a certain obligation, certain things, then I don't do it. Um, but like in Haitian voodoo, my godmother's like, you should have your own house now. Da, 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 da. I'm like, when it's all what time happens. So even if you're told in the Odu that certain things are going to happen, you can't force it because, and I'm learning that too, because I used to, from when I really started out doing um, like spirituality, even before I got ATRs, I was in chaos magic and I was doing spells and stuff. Like I needed a job. I did a spell, got a job very quickly. I did it last very long. No, was it a perfect job? No, but it was a job and that's how I, I, I got by. Um, but things kind of went into different things. I mean, it's 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 just this what the topic I'm talking about humility. It's like you can change certain things. You can do all the ebos. You can do all that. You can have all the stuff. You can do all the magic and have all these different spirits. But you only can push what's supposed to happen only so far, especially. With other clients who are not in the tradition, it's very easy. And I, like I've done candles for people to get a job, they got a job in a week. Like I, I remember I did that when I like three years ago. Somebody like one of my friends, they were I was in the Airbnb. They were in the Airbnb too. They lost the job. They couldn't afford it. They had to move out. I helped them out, um, both financially and I didn't know these people. I just felt for them. I just I gave them a little bit of money so they have a place to stay because they had a kid. I did a candle for them. They weren't really okay with that. I just said, just trust me. It's just a green candle, da, da, da. Um, the wife got a job within a week. And then they were able to get themselves back on, on track. And then they're still friends with me today. But that they're both not in the, in the tradition. And when you have people like that, it's very easy to give them kind of like a boost and help them out where they need to be helped out. And then you do what you're supposed to do. Um, but when you have a person who is a priest who has certain Odu and has certain path and their ancestors are very influenced in their life, you cannot push that as much. They have to do it the ceremonial way or they have to do it 
in their own time and it gets real frustrating and i just i realize it's not and you know people are quick to say that something's wrong with your initiation something's wrong with your ori something's wrong with whatever if you're not rich if you're not in a, a you're not a priest and you're not what you don't have like um a rolls royce and i'm driving down miami beach something's wrong with you apparently that's a really weird I would say probably more Cuban view of um, spirituality. Or if you're not on, and even in Brazil, it's like if you're not on TV, then you're not a good Baba. If you're not on doing all these lectures and everyone knows your name, then you you must not be that great or something's wrong with your Risha. Or if you go into Africa, like the people who are actually famous, they're actually famous because they come from legacies. Their parents were Baba Lyles. Their parents were Luos and Arabas. Their parents, their it's been generations and generations of spiritual, political clout, and also a lot of that is political. You have to be um, to be well known in these spiritual communities. You have to be political. You have to do things that may have, may be questionable. You may have to deal with questionable people. You may have to watch what you say, which obviously everyone knows I do not. Um, I kind of say whatever the fuck I want, and that is problematic because I'm not PC. I would not, all these videos I have me cussing and talking about stuff, like, they very real. If I ever became, like, famous, they have a lot of shit to go back to. They're like, hey, Monroe said this back in da 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 da. I don't care. I do what, anything I do that's really controversial, I ask my Arisha, should I keep it up? Shit, was it, was I going too far? Like, I even, like, I, I'm humble enough to do that because some people will get mad by what I say. And I'm like, I think, I seriously think, was I a little too far? And if I get told no, then I keep it up. And that's what, that's who really I care about the most. I care about the opinion of my Arishas, my ancestors, my spirits more than what other people say online. So, because even the most, even the things that I feel kind of weary about putting online, sometimes even some of the things that are most painful for me, do I'm like almost crying talking about. I've had people come to me later, even years later, tell me that it helped them out. So it is what it is. And yeah, I think I'll end on that because most Bob, yeah, a lot of Babas in Africa live poor. Or they're not as well known. It's a lot of these positions in Nigeria are political, and that's all they are. They're not really. Yes, they know a lot about Ifa, or they're certain Arisha, but they're politically appointed. They're not. They're not appointed to these chief positions because they're the baddest Babalals in the land, or they're the best Shango priests in all of Nigeria. There is a political um, position. They may, it's like, it's like the Vatican. It's the Pope isn't the Pope because he's healed people. He's the Pope because he's political and has covered up enough bullshit, I guess. Because, you know, the Vatican and the uh, Archdiocese has lots of bullshit that go on that has been covered up. So basically who can keep the best secrets and put his most stuff under the rug and ha- and has the most the best appeal i guess appearance of an old white man i don't know um because it's always old white man there's always that guy from africa who is like the best he has like the best record and the best prestige of all the other candidates but he never gets he never gets appointed no matter how many people how many popes die or popes uh you know you know uh, quit He's always there trying to get a position. He's like, I'll be Pope one day. No, he won't ever be Pope. They always want a white Pope. And even though there's, there's probably, that guy's probably the most qualified, it just won't happen. So it is what it is. There's certain people are who really should be in these positions are not, and then people who shouldn't be in these positions are. And that's the way the world is because spirituality is not really a political thing um even historically when we go we always talk about kings and 
Orishas and all this stuff. And a lot of these kings became Orisha. A lot of these kings became Vodun. And and I, 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 keep, I feel like I keep talking about Shango lately. And most people don't realize that Shango's name really wasn't Shango. It was Jakuta. Like, he named, renamed himself Shango. And, like, he became, he embodied Shango, like, the energy. And people confused the Irumile, the energy, with the Orisha. And then I had someone tell me that, oh, that they had an issue, like, the Irumile. And I was like, dude, nobody has the Irumile. No one has an Irumile. That's like saying I have, like, wind... Or I have the element of fire on my head. Like, I have the, I am the embodiment of fire inside my body right now. Like, that is the most crazy shit that anyone has ever said to me. Where they said that they were, I'm like, you, you saying that you're taking an energy that was created as a part of the universe from the beginning by God. And you have that on your head. Through a ceremony that costs a couple thousand dollars. Is that what you're telling me? Wow. And you're saying that you can possess with that. No. No. No one does. You get possessed with an Orisha. And most people know most Orishas were human. And those humans were black. And these two concepts are very difficult for people, especially Latinos, especially Portuguese and Spanish speaking people of the lighter variety. They have a very hard, it's hard for them to swallow because they can say they can pray to Joan of Arc. They can pray to St. George. They can pray to, well, St. George wasn't really white, but basically they, they pray to all these white depictions of people, whether they were white or not. And um, say these people are were real people and they became saints and they do miracles and they can possess people. That's fine. But when you say an Arisha or a Vodun or an Inkisi was the same type of thing. They're real people and they have turned into these energies and ancestors and have become have achieved apotheosis, basically a person becoming a god through worship and sacrifice and veneration, they can't handle it. They can't handle it. They just say, no, 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 no. These are energies. These are energies. I work with energies. These are, they have no color. They're not black. They're not, I can't, no, 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 no. You're crazy. Don't say, no, they are not black. I have people in Brazil tell me that they are not black. The Orishas are not black. I'm like, it's called Afro-Brazilian tradition, Candomblé, Umbanda. We're using African words all every day. Every time we talk about the subject, we're using African words. We're using African drums, African dances, African rituals, and but they're not black. Okay? I don't understand that. It's like your brain's melting down when we talk about this. What about the Easter business? Are you talking about when people say Easter, that Oshum is Ishtar and Ish, Ish, Ishchel and Inanna and all this stuff? I went off on a guy for that. When he put saying, I understand Easter. And actually, there is a Germanic deity called Easter. That is the goddess of new beginnings in the spring. They completely forget her. Most of our, our holidays are named after white gods and goddesses, Roman, German, um, Nordic. Our days are weak are Nordic. It's like Wednesday is Odin's day, Thursday is Thor's day. This is all right in your face every day. And people just skip that, but they want to say, oh, this is Inanna, Ishtar. And, uh, yeah, it does have to do with Inanna and Ishtar. But when you said Oshun, I was like, Oshun wasn't even thought of in the time of Ishtar and Inanna, and definitely not Het Haru, not Hathar. They were talking about two different times periods. Like Oshun, the person was fairly. Re I mean, most of our Rishas, when they historically were born, they were born after Jesus, like after Muhammad, even. So, how are you going to talk about these people are. And they have these stories, and they're saying they're from time, like 10,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, time immemorial. 
the energies were the the names for these things were obviously Yoruba and West African because Yoruba weren't even called Yoruba at that point. Those nomadic people that came into Nigeria, they had these names for these concepts and deities, yes. But the people that become Orisha that we got in pots with otas and tools and all that other shit, well, it's not shit, but you know, you know my on my vernacular. Um, those are real human people. Those are real people that lived, and they were black. Not, not my complexion, not cafe con leche, not caramel, black, black. Like, my dad is black, black, and they, and they were darker than him. Because um, my dad's, like, chocolate coffee color. These Nigerians are black, black. So, you're going to tell me that Arishas are not black. I'm just going to look at you sour, especially when you got... Arishas, and I said this in another video, when you have Arishas where the one of their names is the black guy, like, Eshu, it's like, Omokurin Dudu Ita, the black guy from the forest, or the black guy from outside. We have Arumila, his name means this little short black guy. When you have Ogun, um, some of his names is like the black guy. When you tell me he's not black, you're just delusional. Don't tell me I'm crazy. It's in the damn prayers. It's in the songs. It's in the, the veneration names for them. Not just in Africa. Some of them are in the songs in Condomble. If you actually decipher the Ketu, it's in there. Like, there's in the Kanshigas, it calls them the black people. So it's like, when you guys tell me, oh, they're not black, they're energies. No, you have the black... And that was the other thing. Some of y'all don't even have Yoruba Arishas on your head. Like in Santeria, we have diasporic traditions. We have Santeria. We have Shango Baptist. We have Condomble, even Umbanda. We all should know at this point that the Arishas in Santeria and the Arishas in Condomble are not the same Arishas in... <laughs> <laughs> are not the same Arishas in Yoruba, in Nigeria. They don't dance the same. They don't act the same. They may eat the same shit. They may eat the same stuff. But they do not act the same. They're in possession. They don't dance the same. They don't talk in a European language in Nigeria. Nigeria has had a whole bunch of European people come through their country. They've had Portuguese. they had British. They've had um, French. Dutch, all types of people come into their land. The Orishas still don't come down speaking English, Spanish, French, none of that. Portuguese, none of it. So stop saying that uh, people... And then we go into Vodou and stuff. You have uh, Vodouns that speak Twi. Twi don't, is not spoken in Togo. That's spoken in Ghana. Like you have or, or Hausa and Mama Chamba. You have all these these spirits that speak in different languages and the medium doesn't speak that language. So stop the bullshit where you're saying, oh, because the person speaks Spanish, that the Risa speaks Spanish. No. I have Portuguese speaking spirits. And when they get close to me and they write them out me, I start hearing that language. I don't speak Portuguese like that. I have, a, I, my, my Risha speaks Yoruba and Fawn. I don't speak Yoruba and Fawn like that. I don't know Fawn at all. Like, I know certain words in Afa. Outside of prayers, I cannot speak it. I don't know what people are saying. But when my Arisha starts coming around, I start hearing stuff in a language I don't understand. Like, sorry. You did this, like, that thing where people say, oh, my Arisha speaks what a language is in the person's head. This is not, you're not a computer. That This is not... The spirit does not come down and start downloading whatever language is in your head. That's not how it works. The spirit speaks whatever language they did over whatever they learned over many lifetimes. So most of the time, um, if you're like, I, I still go back to this horrifying situation where I went a drumming and a Risha with Shango and Shango could only speak Spanish. Like, Shango actually needed a translator. For me. That I could not explain. I was like, how is this, this Shango only understand Spanish? Not even Yoruba. Not English. Not, not Portuguese. Not French. Nothing. Only Spanish. Needed a two-way communication. 
even in Haitian voodoo, when these Loire, they come down speaking French, Creole, Spanish in 21 divisions, they still understand you. You can speak any language you want and they'll understand you. Like I've talked to La Serene. La Serene doesn't even talk. She, she speaks telepathically. I speak per, just straight English to her and she understands everything in my head, everything I'm saying, and then she gives me a response. This, this bullshit about they speak whatever language, the medium stuff, and they need a translator for Spanish. That's not an Orisha. That is a dead Orisha priest of Lukumi. Or even the same thing in Condomble. Like, you have re- really, really, really strong Orishas in Condomble. But when I was at a Shango Festa, and after the Shango came down, and they took me in the back, and then this Shango came down, I mean, was came towards me, and then start speaking some words in Portuguese. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, I just had Shango in my body. And I, and then this one speaking Portuguese to me. What the fuck? I was so confused when I was in Salvador. And then I, that's how I learned that a lot of them do speak Portuguese. And a lot of them, they don't do it publicly. I mean, my, my godfather Zochosi spoke Portuguese at the end after he was done dancing they usually do at the at the end but that threw me for a loop like soon as he started speaking Portuguese I was like oh this guy ain't from your I was like this guy in Yoruba this guy is not from Africa um because he is speaking straight up Portuguese right now it was real it was a real possession um his face completely changed he danced he was really strong energy everything is there but it still was not, it was a Linnean spirit. Just like my friend had Laguna Day on Sunday. Um, really long, strong spirit. Really beautiful Arisha. But a Laguna Day in Brazil is not the Laguna Day in Africa. I don't even think they really, it has really come down or into the tradition like that. Because he's so obscure. Um, I just don't think anybody would have the real... Laguna Day, because he's so rare even in Nigeria. Um, it's a lineage spirit. Same thing with Oshimari. Oshimari is very rare in Nigeria, and even outside Nigeria. Most of the, um, I don't know if most people realize this, but when you go outside of Brazil, anybody possessed by a snake spirit is usually crawling on the floor. They are not dancing around doing do 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 no. Like... When I get down Balawedo, my ass is on the floor. My ass is crawling on the floor under a blanket. That's all he does. He's not being doing dancing and do, 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 do. it's awesome. It's a different type of spirit. It's not really a voodoo. It's not really a Dorisha. This kind of information makes people mad, but it is what it is. It's just it is what it is. All these, uh, um. All these different spirits are beautiful. The way they come down is beautiful. But when you start talking about like what is what really is stuff and what it is and what it is, what it isn't, people get mad because they're like, "Oh my god, I believe this." It's like there's layers to believe. There's layers to truth. Truth does make you angry. You can believe something your whole life. When people, I know everybody didn't realize the Tooth Fairy was real or Santa Claus wasn't real, was really pissed. Really pissed. Everybody gets pissed when they find out that's not real. Or the Easter Bunny. Or all these different things that we're told that are actually based on real things, based on um, concepts, based on old deities. The Tooth Fairy is actually really a fairy, but obviously ain't visiting everybody. But, I mean, these are all real things that are happening, that are exist in spirituality, and they're just stories now, but it's not real for us anymore. So, it's, there's levels to truth, there's levels to realization. Back to this person question, what is the difference between a Risha and a Rumile? I talked about that earlier, and a Rumile is like the energy, the energy, like the primordial energy. Just think about when the world was created. Or not even just the world, because it's more than just, uh, well, I think really there's only us, but I mean, the whole universe. So when you think of the elements, you have fire, water, air, earth, spirit. Um, there, were, there is something, there is a group of spirits that deal with 
um, fire. There's a group of spirits that deal with water. There's a group of different spirits that deal with air. There's a diff- di- uh, group of different spirits that deal with earth. And these different spirits have taken on different personalities based on language and culture. So each culture is... Each cultural representation is valid in itself. And that's why I was in the argument with this guy because I'm like, Oshun is not Het Heru or Hathar. And even Hathar is a amalgamation of like two or three older um, types of Netaru. She's not just one type of Netaru. She has many different things that were kind of pushed into together. And even her and Bast and Sekhmet all feed off each other. Um... And then you have the older ones like Shu and Mu and uh, etc. Um, Wajet. Um, so it's not just one that deals with love and fresh water. And you, I forgot the one, the hippopotamus. She's really more of the um, primordial mother. Um, and then you also have the cow one, Netarus too. The names are escaping me. But Ina, Inanna and Ishtar are not the same. There were two separate civilizations close to another um, came upon the same timeline but they're different expressions of the same thing but they each have their own just like Legba and Eshu as I talked in other view other video Eshu from Nigeria and Legba from Vodun has two different representations and they mean different things Eshu holding a a wooden phallus is different than try that oh yeah um, Eshu holding an Ogogo, uh, a wooden, a wooden phallus is different than Eshu literally having a, a super long erection and having horns. It's a different representation it means similar things, but they're different energies. Um, I think people in, especially someone from Voodoo came on. I think people in Haiti understand this the most out of anyone in the diaspora because in Haitian voodoo, we have, or they say we have over 21 nations, and we have different drum rhythms for each nation. We have different spirits, and some of the same spirits will have different expressions within those different nations, and they're distinct, and they act different. So I think Haitians are probably out of the whole diaspora. They understand the respect level for different tribes, different languages, different dance rhythms, different rites. And that they're not all the same. And in, in the Western world, we like to put it, especially with this Joseph Campbell bullshit. Um, I used to like him until I realized what he was really talking about. He's saying everything is the same and everything is in the subconscious and um, it's all within you. It's basically atheist, atheist bullshit. But in saying that everything is the same and basically everything white is the same as everything African and it was there's a lot of layers of bullshit that was an agenda behind that but I like how conscious people grab onto that stuff and go with it too um but every culture has a different aspect of that classification of an energy so but those energies those classifications those personalities are all real they all have a way of interacting with people. And it's not just one person. And the one guy was like, two people see things the same way. I'm like, no, nigga, this is not two people. These are two separate civilizations. These are a whole bunch of people. That's a whole lot of energy over centuries that have made this personality into something manifest. It's not just an idea. Jesus was an idea. Jesus is an idea from many different cultures. And look how much power it has in just 2,000 years. Now, think about any of those spirits that have been there longer in Africa. Do you think they have some of the same type of just as legit? Yes, they exist. When they, when they run out of followers, they still exist. There's, there's, there's cults in Africa that are almost extinct that they still live on in the diaspora and Haitian voodoo and Condomble and Lukumi and ah, da, da. They're still there in some way. Um, they're, just because it's not in Africa like the way it was doesn't mean they, it just stopped being. And even once it came to the diaspora, it's changed and, and molded and combined with other things. That's what spirits do. That, it's, about, it's about 
when you get to that certain level of this intermediary state, they change and and move with the times and move with people. So the Oshun, that's why we have so many roads of Oshun. We have Oshun. Oshun was a very popular person. She had many different, which we would use the Indian term, avatars. She had some avatars where she was a queen of certain villages. Some she gave birth to literally everybody in the town. Uh, there was there's Oshuns that are, there are warriors. There's Oshuns that are even they say in Nigeria they're masculine. Um, Oshun can go on anybody's head, no problem. They like to give that to Yemaja or even Oshala, but Oshun is one of the only female Rishas that can go on any male or female head, head uh, gay, straight, trans, whatever, and have no problem. Most in Cuban E5, a lot of Babalaos have Oshun on their head. Is it's and also in Nigeria, a lot of Babalaos and Abos have have an Oshun in their head. That Oshun can go on anybody's head, really. Um, the same thing. I don't. I don't think Oshala should go on everybody's head, to be honest. Because if you're not okay up here, that's real stressful. Oshala is not gonna be. Yeah, I don't agree with that. That's a Santeria thing. Where they think Oshala can go on anybody's head because he created everybody. And if nobody will take you, Oshala will take you. Mm, I don't know about that. <clears throat> can gay people get initiated? I don't know if you're aware of this, but gay people are like a large portion of Orisha tradition in the diaspora, at least. In uh, Nigeria, Nigeria doesn't have gay people, apparently. Um if they are gay Nigerians, they have been exported to other countries. So, so on pair on record, gay pe- uh, the, Nigeria has no gay people, so they have no gay initiates. There's a lot of gay Americans that go to Nigeria to get initiated, but that's another story. And also from Brazil, another thing, and they become chiefs too. Um, yeah, they're getting, but yeah, in Brazil, there's a whole. I would probably say the majority of Baba Larishas in Condomble are gay. It's just it's it was disturbing for me too. In in a certain way, because I was like, how is everyone in the fucking house gay? I don't understand that. I was like, I don't think that's balanced to me at all. Because, I mean, you have, there's, you obviously need female um, akejis in different positions. But um, it used to be matriarch. It was a, a matriarchy. So it used to be mostly African uh, women, matriarchs of Condomble. And then now it's more, especially in Sao Paulo, in Rio, it's a lot of gay men, some black, some, but a whole bunch of white ones. And the gay babas like to initiate other gay people. And they like to gay, then they like to initiate other gay guys that they're attracted to, which I find disturbing too. Because if you're attracted to someone, you shouldn't be calling them baba or Godchild and all that other stuff. It's just very awkward for me. It's like, it's just even aesthetically, I'm like, uh, you guys are a little too close for me. It's a little awkward. I I initiated into uh, my friend's house in Salvador, and yeah, it was mostly gay people, and I couldn't I couldn't stand it. I had to get out because I couldn't. It was too, and they were mostly younger gay people, younger gay black people, black Brazilians, and it was too much bullshit and gossiping and i'm very serious about spirituality and when you have a sacred space and there's orisha dancing and there's stuff i'm like you know in my in, at least in my viewpoint there's certain things that need to be done in case something happens in case someone falls in case someone gets mounted in case um orisha does something unexpected Everybody should be paying attention. Everybody in the house should be paying attention. Everybody should be on their best behavior. And when I see a lot of the, we call it fofoca, like the, a lot of the gossiping and um, the the giggling and a lot of the bullshit. Not saying that everything in the Risha, every Risha party should be serious. No, it's supposed to be a good time and it's supposed to be um, a celebration. But when it's almost all just like, oh, uh, they're hanging with the girls. Um, all the time, and it's never really serious. I don't like that. And then also just the jealousies and all the other stuff. And then also inappropriate stuff. If initiate 
like I was this happened to me like there was this one gay guy in the house like I was going to the bathroom and there's only one bathroom and I have to go from the initiation room into the bathroom covered with a sheet and I lit it and, and I they cover me with a sheet and then so other non initiates don't see me and then I have like a sheet around me and I literally this was wrapped after the sacrifice so literally my sheet was covered with blood and like I was like get, getting to the bathroom, which is only like a curtain and a, and a toilet and a shower. And then as I was like getting past the curtain, and then like my top, uh, my my claw kind of fell a little bit. He was like checking me out, and I thought I was like, dude, that's fucked up. Like I I thought it was so inappropriate because it's like, a I'm your god brother, b I'm covered with dried blood, three I'm an initiate. What the fuck? Why are you trying to look at me like as I'm trying to go to the bathroom? I'm in the most uncomfortable position. Like I'm literally covered with blood. I have to go to the bathroom, and I just want to get done with this damn initiation. Because I don't know if people know that condom blade is 21 days. Usually, it's 21 days. It's a long time. This is how they traditionally do it. It's how they traditionally do it in the Oyo of Shango initiation and other Risha. So. It's a really long time, and when you are uncomfortable, and also in con- and also contemplate, you get you're nude a lot. You're just I'll be straight. I'll do another video on that. You're nude a lot, and you're doing you do at least seven elbows. Every people think you get nude in Santeria when you get your clothes ripped off in front of people in the beginning. No, you do seven elbows. And every Ebo, you lose some clothes. Like, you naked a lot. And you're not, you naked outside, you naked inside, you naked in the street, you naked in the, in the river, you naked a whole bunch of places. Like, you were just naked. It's uncomfortable. Especially when, you know, I have issues with people in the religion, especially if they're gay. Like, and I'm getting naked in front of them. It was very uncomfortable. So, but Brazilians are different. They don't give a fuck. Um, they're just very sexual people. They're very open people. They get naked. They don't, they, they're like, what's the issue? <laughs> but um, I had some really fucked up experiences with my first um, couple godparents in Lukami about seven, eight years ago. And they did some inappropriate shit. And I was, they took all my clothes off when they shouldn't in front of everybody and so that was fucked up and then i had another um godparent touch me and that was fucked up too so i did not want to be honest i did not want to have a god, gay godparent ever again i didn't ever want to be in a gay house ever again because of those two experiences because i was trying to be liberal and i tried to give people a chance and i was like Okay, this person is really popular and this person is really well known and um, recommended and I let him being gay, let it go. Did not go over very really well. And not leaving, leave, leaving that house and then leaving the next house because the other guy was acting stupid. Um, I don't know why that happens. Usually because I think it's partly due to my energy and also my Arisha. So I have SU. And then my mom's Oshun. So people get really sexual around me, even when I don't have any interest in them. And I've had this problem with men and women. Um, making, even at work, I've been sexually harassed by men and women at work. Um, just, I don't know. It's just something about me. Even my mom's told me when I was a kid, they had to move two teachers away from me. Like they had to, like I was in elementary school, two elementary schools, one I had to move, but they had, um, one of my teachers was giving me too much attention. And then I went to another school, uh, a majority white school, and they had a librarian that was giving me too much attention. And my parents had to get involved twice. Nothing happened to me, but it's just, when I, when I think about that, I was just a kid, so, Clearly, there's something about me that attracts people in that way that is awkward for me. 
And so when I'm in a confined place and I can't leave and I'm can't I'm forced to stay for a week, two weeks, four weeks, five weeks. <laughs> um and there's a whole bunch of gay people there, it makes me extremely uncomfortable. And certain points, and, and my Risha's knew that because at a certain point, like when they started to close, like take my clothes off, or as soon as, like one time, as soon as they cut my shirt, I mounted because um, I was not comfortable in that situation. And then my Risha came down and then as soon as they were going to take my, and I remember as soon as I, because I woke up out of it when my pants were about to get taken off. Like, as soon as, like, they are ready to change my clothes, I would mount back. Even during my Saida, when they were changing the different clothes, as soon as they were changing my clothes, I, I came out of it. And then, and then they had to call my Risha again and put me back into it after I was dressed. Um because of what's happened before so it's like my arishas know what might happen so they make sure i'm aware of what they make sure i'm completely there when stuff is done so i know so i'm watching what's going on um even my godfather this one was slightly appropriate inappropriate because i had uh i had a wardrobe malfunction in the in the street and that was that that pissed me off too because um, then when you're doing ebos, like they don't tell you anything. And I was like, you would have, I'm like, you should have told me I was going to be butt ass naked in the street. That would have been some good information to tell me, especially when I had bad traumatic experiences before. And you know, this, you might want to tell me that I might be butt ass naked in the street. So they cut my clothes off in the street. And then I, my pants to put on had some malfunction. They were custom made pants by a seamstress. So there was a malfunction with the string. So I literally had to hold my pants on me to keep it on. And that wasn't funny. Both, both the Akeji, the female and my godfather were like, why is your dick hanging out? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it, it was, I was upset because I was already, I was like basically naked. I was naked and I just literally, I didn't have a shirt on. I literally just had pants on. And then I got so, and then they wanted me to walk down the street. I was like, move this fucking car up this street before I kill someone. Cause I am not walking down the street, butt ass naked. So after that happened, I literally just like wrapped myself up. I had, I like took two sheets. I wrapped myself up. I looked like I was a nun. I was just like, I hate you, everyone. <laughs> and you know, other people I was talking, they were just laughing because they're like, it's easy. Like they don't care about being naked, and they don't care about like being butt ass naked in the street. But I'm American, and I come from a Baptist family, and we ain't butt ass naked in the street. That's just it is what it is. Um. I was talking about a lot of things, and I got in off topic. To my experience, gay people are not supposed to. They love. Up, 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 up. Jasir, Ifa, Sakin, Franklin. Uh, yeah, please no, like, homophobia or all that other stuff. I mean, I talk about a lot of topics here. But like, like I said, there's a lot of people who are who are gay in the tradition in Brazil, and some of my followers. So don't try not to say anything that's like love money. Everybody loves money in this tradition. Seriously, and character is a big issue in all Orisha traditions. From my experience, from my experience, character is huge. And character is talked about so much, but people don't even really know what character is. Character is having morals. Character is having ethics. Things that not only you get taught in religion, you not only get taught in school, not only you get taught by the government, but it should be taught at home. It doesn't need, it doesn't need to be taught at home. You should actually know how to act and know how to treat people, at least intrinsically from inside. That shouldn't be something that has to be forced or done by punishment. You should know how to treat people. And a lot of times that's not. Like people think if you can get away with shit, then it's okay. If you can do an ebo for it, then it's okay. It's not okay. 
um, you only can do so many ebos, kill so many goats, kill so many chickens, and before stuff catches up with you. And then when it catches up with you, it's unexpected, and you want to blame everybody in the world. You want to say it's witchcraft. You want to say um, it's, you know, blame everyone. And it's really your own actions that have been commute, um, building up over time, and it just happened. I mean, SU lets you get away with a lot of shit until it's payday. And that's also why sometimes he got that, you know, people say SU is not the devil, but he kind of has that way of acting about him where he'll let you keep fucking up and doing the wrong thing and you think everything's okay. And then when it's time to collect, he collect the ass. And sometimes it's punishment, sometimes it's laws, sometimes it's literally death. Um, because everybody knows in E5, SU work, works with Yami, he works with Ajagoon, he works with everybody. So, he knows when shit's about to go down. And a lot of people think, if I can just do my Ebo, I'll be okay. A lot of priests, no matter whether they're Cuban, Nigerian, Brazilian, they all do that shit. And then when somebody, and no one, said, no one says anything to them, no one t- says, maybe you shouldn't be doing this. Until almost the obituary gets posted on Facebook. And it's like, oh, he was such a good person. Lies. But um, they knew what they, that they were doing. They know what they did. And they paid for it. And that's what happens. And it's going to start happening a lot more. Because I'm seeing it happen a lot more internationally. Like literally every week or so, I'm seeing a posting of some elder or some priest has died. And some of them are very young now. They're like 20 something, 22, 26, 24. It's not just the old ones going now. And it's from stupid ass shizzle. <laughs> ass shiz, ass shizzle. Uh, <laughs> Everyone got character issues in in the diaspora and in Nigeria. It's just a it's what they the Rishas are kinda just teaching us. It's that it's back to the talk about humility. It's just it's just lessons in life as a human. Um yeah. Here I some of the gay people in nutrition are very sexual and some of them very inappropriate and some of them do some lot of bullshit. I agree. I see the same thing in Luke with me. But I see I see women doing the same shit. I see men doing the same shit. Straight men doing the same shit. Uh, straight men who do not can't keep the dicks in their pants. Like a lot of male priests in Luke with me in Cuban E5 can't keep the dicks in their pants. I, I my got my hand of my E5 in two thousand summer two thousand twelve. I was I received my Awafaka with the Bible Owl's mistress. I didn't find out she was the mistress until after my ceremony. And then when my Odu came up, it was his Odu. And and he went completely white. And I didn't figure out why. And he was blaming me. And he was like, oh, no, this dude needs to go. Because I had pulled up his Odu. And that in Cuban Ifa, that means I was basically going to replace him. And he got scared. And then they found out later that. Yeah, the the girl I was kicking it with at the ceremony, I was so nice.